Good evening, Power Life and Ignition. How are we doing tonight? All right, all right. You guys are, are a little more awake now. You guys are uh, got the worship juices flowing. That is awesome. Uh, and so I'm so excited that you're here um, because these are the real Christians. Uh, I'm just kidding. These aren't the real Christians. Well, maybe they are. I hope they are. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you. You chose wisely. You really did. You chose wisely to be here. And I know that you could have been like, I'm going to go get candy at every house on every corner that I can. But you came to encounter God and be with one another. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, it, it is truly good to be together in God's house. Can I get an amen for that one? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, can we also just take a second to praise God for, uh, for Lauren and the band and like she said, the production team. God is doing amazing things through them. Our God is mighty and powerful. Um, but uh, here's the thing. Now, what, what we're going to do is I, I want to take a couple minutes to actually, we're going to bring Lauren back up here in just a second, but we're going to do, do like a little interview with her because uh, I don't know about you, but uh, for me, especially when I was in high school and when I was in middle school um, uh, and especially middle school, I felt very uncomfortable during times of worship because I didn't really like understand what was going on. I didn't really like, I, I I saw other people that they would like be raising their hands or they would be like really into it and they, it was like all emotional or, and the other people, they were just like screwing around and I kind of was one of those people that just like, I want to just nudge my buddy uh, and just like uh, try to tap him on the shoulder and see if he looks the other way. Like that was where I was at. Uh, and so what I was hoping that we could do is just get to know uh, a little bit more about why do we do this? Why do, why do we as Christians stand in a room and sing songs. Where else do you do that in life except for like a concert with songs you heard on the radio? Like, why are we, why are we standing in a room together and singing songs to Jesus? So, uh, Lauren, where, I don't know where she went, but Lauren, can you come, come on back out here? We want to uh, just have a conversation. Can we give her a warm welcome to the stage? Here she comes. All right. And uh, we have these lovely, um, like, glitter blow-up chairs that we can sit in here. So, or you want to sit, you sit right here. You sit right here. You that that would be great. You uh, and then we have, we also have our little unicorn buddies uh, over here keeping this us company. This is Travis, and this is Frederick. Travis and Frederick. Everyone okay. Hello. So, everyone say, hey, Travis. <laughs> hey, Frederick. That was, was very that was uh, not enthusiastic. It was lackluster. It's yeah, that's right. okay, though. Uh, everyone say, hey, Lauren. Hey, everybody, again. <laughs> uh, so, so obviously, uh, most of you, unless you're new tonight, you've seen Lauren uh, up here leading worship at Power Life for Ignition uh, week after week, and you do such a fantastic job, uh, and you just serve so faithfully, and your passion is, it's so easy uh, to see and, and connect with, uh, and it helps to lead us in worshiping Jesus. And uh, so one question that um, uh, I was just wanting to ask you is, how did you end up here? How did you, how like, did become a professional worship leader. <laughs> That's such uh, a weird thing. <laughs> I know. Like, well, what's, that, what's um, that all about? Yeah, so I started leading worship when I was 15 years old, um, and I'm 29 now. 15? You're 15. How um, many of you are 15? Yeah. Couple of you. Yeah, so I actually helped start a church when I was 15 years old. Um, the youth pastor heard me sing, and he was like, get up here, and then that I became a worship leader. So lots of responsibility for little 15-year-old me. And um, then from there, I led pretty much my whole life. So I've kind of grown up in that, and there's a lot to that. I've grown up as a worship leader, um, and I've been through a lot of different stages of that too. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. And, mm -hmm. and, and so where, where did you, like, because you're from California originally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so were, was that in California? Was yes. that here in Iowa? Like, uh, yeah, how'd that, so how'd I, that work out? I grew up in the Inland Empire, grew up in the desert um, in California, and then I moved around in California, and then I moved here about three years ago. Um, yeah, and I've been with y'all for like a year and a half-ish. Yeah, yeah. awesome. Mm -hmm. um, well, like we were saying, worship is kind of like, uh, it's kind of this strange thing that standing around, singing songs to Jesus, uh, that's, that's not something that people just do like, hey, what do you want to do on Saturday? Uh, let's get together with some friends. Some people do, yeah. but that's not a really typical thing. Uh -huh. And so for some of us in the room, worship might feel strange or maybe we're new to this idea of worshiping Jesus with music. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I wrote this question down. When you worship, especially when you worship with music, what's actually going on for you in your mind? Like, mm -hmm. uh, and I know that there's like when you're like leading us in worship and it'd be interesting to know what goes on in your mind then. Because I know like you can see 
you can see everything, right? I uh, see all of you. Yes. Every single one of you. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, uh, but then also just personally, yeah. what, what happens for you when you worship Jesus? Mm-hmm. Um, well, like you said, it's definitely different when I'm up on a stage. Um, we have in-ears and there's a little lady talking to me in my ears telling me where to go in the song. So that ruins a little bit of the magic for y'all. But um, there's that side of it. But then there's also the other side where is um, a huge part of being a worship leader is, is my wor- worship authentic? And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But so a lot of what's going through my mind is what is worship? How am I worshiping? Um, and I think there's a worship leader that I really respect. And um, she said, worship is connection. So that's kind of the constant thing that's going through my mind is how am I connecting with God right now? Um, and for me, that's music. And it's always been music. I've been singing and writing songs since I was like five years old. So that's always been music for me. That's not the same for everybody, but that's how I worship and that's where I feel most close to God. And I think that's really what worship is. And, and so, so you have this, uh, you're singing a song because anyone can just like move air and maybe, like, if I'm moving air, it's out of tune. Uh, <laughs> but, like, we can move air. We can sing about Jesus. But, like, what's happening? Like, how does that connection happen? Because mm-hmm. uh, for some people, they talk about, oh, when I was in worship, I totally felt the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Other times we worship and we don't feel anything. Does that mean the worship isn't authentic? Mm-hmm. What, what's, that, what's that all about? Yeah. Um, I think a lot of times it's the words that I'm singing that help me connect to God. Um, but not always. I think um, there's a lot of instrumental music that kind of, feels like God. It feels like God. I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's a feeling. It's, um, it's dedication and it's being intentional, being able to be open to whatever God has to say, which is, can be anything, can look like anything. Um, and it's also, um, not getting discouraged, I think in the times where it doesn't feel like a certain thing. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but where, like you'll see a lot of people like raising their hands or you'll start to cry or, or it can be very emotional connecting with God. But when those moments don't happen, knowing that it's not, that God's not there, it's just a different way of connecting with God in that moment. Yeah, I, I think of that like, like the day that uh, my wife and I got married, you know, we had some emotions that day, but we don't like wake up in the morning every day be like, <laughs> Gosh, you look so great. Or maybe you do. I don't know. I mean, some days, uh, some days, like I'm, I'm, you know, I make Michelle cry because, like, I'm, you know, like annoying and don't pick up my clothes or whatever. Uh, and so it's a different kind of crying, right? But, uh, but as relationships progress, sometimes you have different experiences with, and same yeah. thing in your relationship with God. Yeah, I think yeah. ultimately worship is just a reflection of your relationship with God, and your relationship with your friends can be different all the time. So of course, your relationship with God can feel different sometimes and there's nothing wrong with that yeah that's that's super wise um i I wrote down another question for you um because uh i love music personally and like that's one of the ways that i connect with god the most is through music um but there's probably a lot of people that are here that music isn't exactly their thing uh and so is and a lot of times when we think of worship uh we're like hey we're gonna have a worship night and there's lots of music uh and so when we're in a church setting worship oftentimes means when we sing songs to Jesus. Uh, but worship, according to the Bible, is a bit broader than that. So how, how does what worship really means, uh, how does like using your gifts to bless other people and glorify God, how does that apply to people that maybe aren't as musically passionate, both when they're at church singing songs, but also when they're like, does this other passion of mine, is that a wor- uh, way to worship God yeah. in some way? What, how would you answer yeah, that? Yeah, I think um, in our Bible reading earlier, it talks about the true worship is being yourself. Um, and all of us have different gifts and talents. Um, they're not all musical. Like I'm on a stage singing in front of you, so there's mine, <laughs> surprise. Um, but there's lots of other things that we're good at. And um, I think it comes down to using that um, to help other people and to spread the love of God to other people. Um, a lot of times, like I think I'm a writer as well. And so I, I journal a lot. And to me, that's worship. I'm connecting with God. I'm talking to God, writing down what God is saying. That's a form of worship. That's not singing. Um, that's not music. Um, I think being kind to people is a form of worship because God's love is kind. Um, so spreading God's love is definitely worshiping him. Um, it's not just music. It's, it's a lot more than that. Um, and I think 
I said earlier, worship is connection. So anything that connects you to God in a powerful way that also connects other people to God in a powerful way, that's worship and that's powerful. And, and I, I've even talked to people that for them, uh, like, and this isn't like a replacement to uh, going to worship with the whole body of Christ on the weekend, but like on their sports team, that, like that sport is their passion. And so when they play, they play for the glory of God and they play to uh, bless, uh, bless the teammates that they have. And, uh, and so for them, that's, that's been a very, like you use the word connection, that they feel connected to God uh, and they feel like that they're saying, God, you're awesome. Uh, and, uh, and there's lots of um, connection that happens for yeah. them through that. And yeah. so, so there's lots of wa- ways to do that, right? Um, but you'd mentioned the Bible reading. So uh, in Romans, uh, and this, this is a really popular chapter. Uh, lots of people memorize these verses and it says, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but let God transform you by renewing the way that you think. And so, uh, and especially when, uh, when you're in middle school and especially when you're in high school, fitting in feels really great, right? Like we, we all want to fit in, um, but fitting in actually gets in the way of worship and it gets in the way of, uh, of connecting that connection with God. Uh, why is fitting in so problematic for worship? Why is it like this strong desire that we, and not just middle schoolers and high schoolers, because I'll be honest with you guys, I want to fit in too, you know? Like I, I want people to, to like me. I don't want like people to, I don't want to stand out where people are like, what's that weird guy doing? Yeah. And then I became a pastor. So now it's just like my it's life now. It's inevitable. Uh, now it's inevitable. <laughs> but w- w- what's that all about? Why is fitting in problematic for worship? I think it goes back to what we were saying that your relationship with God is different from everyone else's. Of course, God is the same, but your personal relationship is your personal relationship. And if um, if we're just trying to worship the same way, like maybe you want to worship the same way I do, jumping around and looking crazy, um, maybe that's not exactly how you feel most comfortable worshiping, or maybe that's not like that's not your most vulnerable place with God. Um, and so that you're not really being yourself then. And that gets, it gets tricky. Um, I think it's harder to connect with God if you're not being who you are, if you're not, um, if you're not worshiping in a way that is uniquely the way that you worship. Um, and so trying to fit in and trying to be somebody else you're not bringing your authentic self to that worship space. And there's so much more that you can experience with God if you are bringing your authentic self. I relate to that, especially when I was, in, I was talking just a second ago about being in junior high and just like wanting to poke my buddies because like we were singing songs about like love for Jesus and we're, we're talking about all these, uh, I mean, the words are really powerful and meaningful and there's a lot of feelings in those. And I, I think that I just was like, I'm a man and I won't feel feelings. And so like I goofed around because I was uncomfortable uh, as opposed to being, you use the word vulnerable. Uh, So what's that, what's that like to be vulnerable in worship? How do you practice being real and open? uh, And maybe what are the things that get in the way of that? Yeah. um, I think vulnerability is a hard thing because we're so used to um, putting up a front and we're so used to just how we think we're supposed to act. Um, But I think it first comes with being honest with yourself. Like, how am I feeling about God today? How am I feeling about coming into this space and being in this music or journaling or in this team, um, playing whatever you're playing? How do I feel about God in that space? And then allowing yourself to be that. And um, sometimes that's like, I'm really excited that I can feel God's love right now and it's the best thing ever. Maybe it's that. Or maybe it's, I'm honestly very angry with God because this, this, and this is happening in my life. And then to realize those things and just let them be, I think that's the most vulnerable place that you can be in. And I know that's hard sometimes, especially when it gets into that like anger or or that confusion or frustration. And I've definitely been there. I've been there even being on the stage. Like I'll be real with you guys. Um, it, it happens, and, and but it just takes a second to focus on that relationship. Um, and that is incredible. Um, that's an incredible way to worship God is to come honestly to worship. Yeah, and so there's this honesty, there's this being real with the emotions that you feel, uh, and, and sometimes, uh, 
because that's never like an excuse to not worship God. You know, like it, it's, you're like, oh, I'm just not feeling it today. So I'm just not going to worship it. Like he deserves our worship in our, on our mountaintops and in our valleys. Uh, so what about in the valleys? Like the how do you valleys. worship God when, when you are mad or mm-hmm. when you just, you're not feeling it today? Like, have you ever had a season where you're just like, I don't really feel super close to you, God. Yes. Uh, I'd love it if you would uh, maybe do something more in my life, God. Uh, uh-huh. tell, tell us about that. Yeah, I've, I feel like I've had a lot of those seasons. Um, I've, I deal with a lot of depression and anxiety. And so um, there have been some times in my life where I've really hit bottom and I've hit a really big low. And I've been hospitalized for depression. Um, and... It's in those times that feel very desperate. And I honestly, I think those were the times that I needed worship the most. Um, I needed to connect with God in that way because I felt like there was nothing else. Um, And we were talking a little bit about this earlier, but I felt like um, like I was trying to be something that I wasn't. And it landed me in that place. And so that kind of goes with the whole Bible reading and talking about don't, don't try to be something that you're not um, because true worship is who you are. And I really felt that in my deepest places. Um, and that's where my worship was most powerful. And it was the hardest because depression takes your energy away. And so it was the hardest to get back to this place that I knew. I knew who I was genuinely but it was really hard to get back to that place and it took a lot, a lot of therapy, a lot of healing um, to get back to that place where I knew I needed to just come and to experience God in the way that I knew and loved. And and there's something that is uh, healing about being in worship, uh, yeah. e- even even on the days where you're not feeling it, right? Like mm-hmm. where you just are among God's people and his spirit is present in the room uh, and just say, I'm mad or I'm, mm-hmm. I'm broken or I'm mm-hmm. depressed and I'm here, God. Yeah. So yeah. here I am. Here's and, my mess. <laughs> yeah, and there's a lot of strength to that. Like yeah. there's a lot of bravery to that, to saying, God, I am hurting, I am broken, I'm depressed, I'm whatever that I am. And God honors that, and he wants that. And um, he, wants, he wants all of our brokenness and the times that we feel um, at our worst, especially. Um, it says that Jesus' heart overflowed with compassion, and that, um, that's a really powerful thing, that when we're broken and feeling our worst, um, there's an overabundance of compassion. Um, and compassion is, is very powerful in, in it's not just like, oh, I, I am, you're really hurting today. It's like, no, let me feel this with you. And that's when worship can be the most powerful is when we bring all of that. that yeah, that's awesome. Um, so one of the things that's, that's cool, if you keep reading in that passage that we saw in that video from Romans, or even if you look at, at uh, um, like if you go to the Old Testament and you look at Daniel, for example, uh, and Daniel's this guy, we, a lot of us know Daniel from the lion's den, you know, he's thrown on the lion's den, but uh, at the very beginning of his story, he was taken uh, from his homeland to another country and put in the king's court, and he was essentially going to be like a slave uh, to the, in the king's court, and they wanted to educate him. Uh, and the king was like, you have, here's your diet, here's your meal plan, here's what you're going to do. And it broke all of his religious rules. Uh, it broke all the, the things that he did to worship God. And so he said, hey, j- I'll just eat the vegetables. And they were like, no, you have to be strong to be a servant in the king's house. And, uh, and so he said, test me in this. And after, uh, after a period of time, uh, Daniel was actually stronger, uh, even though the, it looked weaker, even though it looked like it wasn't as much fun or it looked like it wasn't going to um, benefit him. He was actually stronger. He was actually excelling uh, uh, amongst the other people that were there. And so he actually was put in, in charge and he succeeded in many ways uh, because he stayed true to worship. Uh, and then that passage, is, it says in Romans, it says that we, uh, we don't conform to the patterns of this world, but when we actually use our gifts to bless other people. And your gift, obviously, is to sing, um, among many other things. Uh, uh, and you definitely have a gift of compassion and, and many, many other uh, gifts that have been blessing this community for a long time. Um, but one of the things that, that, if I could make an encouragement to you uh, that are just listening and like, oh, that's cool that she worships and that she, you know, but I don't really, like, music is whatever, not really my thing. Uh, 
everyone has a thing. Everyone has a gift. Uh, and actually, Ignition students, we're going to do a spiritual gifts inventory, a test, where you can actually find out what your spiritual gifts are. But how do you, like, uh, um, how do you, like, actually get to that? And so I, I want to ask one uh, kind of just final question to wrap, wrap this up, because I think that the truth of the matter is there's many of us that we feel like, well, I'm not Daniel, and, or I'm not Lauren, or I, I mean... What would you say to someone who's here today and when they think of the ways that God has made them and the gifts that they have and how they can contribute to the body of Christ and they just think, I'm not good enough or I'm, my gift isn't cool enough or I'm just, I'm not pretty enough. I'm not whatever enough to do something that's actually significant. What, what would you say to that person? Um, I, first, I would say you're more than enough and you're very important. Um, I, th- I think a lot of times when I was younger, I got scared I would have like an opinion, like say we're in a group and we're talking about something and I think, oh, I have an opinion about that, but I got scared to say it out loud. Um, It wasn't until later in life that I started saying those things and people were like, oh, that really, that really changed my mind about that. Um, And that really changed me. It really, I was like, oh, my opinion matters in this place. So I would say to you, um, try it out. Like, try being who you are. Try saying the opinions that you have. Um, Try using those gifts that are in you. Um, And if you have no idea, that's okay, too. Everyone's path is different. Um, But if you have no idea, get to know yourself. Like, start to just think. Start to spend time with yourself. Spend time with God, asking him, what what am I good at? What is my thing? Um, and, and just be faithful in that because it will show up and you'll start to understand that. You'll get confidence in that. You'll start to try things out. Um, maybe it won't always work and that's okay. Um, but you'll start to grow in confidence in that and then that's where your true worship is going to lie and it's going to be an amazing journey and I hope we're all here to see it. Awesome, awesome. Mm-hmm. Hey, can, can we just praise God one more time for Lauren and thank you for sharing just uh, your journey and, uh, and obviously your gifts. So I'm gonna try to get up yeah, out this of this, is hard. this inflatable chair. It's really chair. hard to get out of this chair. Uh, but can, can we all just stand together? I just wanna say a prayer uh, as Lauren goes to, to grab her guitar. We're gonna keep singing some songs. Um, but what I wanna do is I just wanna say a prayer over you to bless you in, in the worship that God has given you, the gifts that God has given you. And so uh, let's pray together. Lord Jesus, we are are grateful. We're grateful uh, that you have filled every single person here with a spiritual gift from, from you. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you would reveal what it is. We ask God that you would take uh, uh, or you would put people in every person's life that can direct them and guide them and help them to understand not just what their spiritual gifts are, but how you want them to use it now. God, I pray that not a single person in this room would feel like they weren't enough. I pray that not a single person in this room would wait until they're older to use their gifts to bless people, but they would do it right now because it gives glory to you and it changes the world. And so Jesus, we thank you for your love, your grace, your gifts, and we're excited to continue worshiping you with song. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's sing, everybody.